hey everybody, my name is Matt and we wanna welcome you guys to Adventure Church Online. We are so glad that you're here with us this morning. Well, we're gonna enter into a time of worship and we encourage you guys, wherever you're at, to sing along with us as we lead you in worship this morning.
such a good God. Your word truly is unfailing. And we just look to you this morning. We pray that you would um, open our eyes to your goodness that's all around us. We trust in you, Father. We trust in you. We, again, we thank you for all the things that you're doing. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Well, thanks so much for worshiping with us this morning. Again, we're going to continue on with this morning's message. Hey, AAC family, Eddie Cortez here, hanging out at work, looking at some deliciousness. Thank you so much for uh, the kind gesture and thinking about us here um, in the hospital. Um, doing our job, taking care of people because they need taken care of. We're gonna enjoy this as any nurse 
or healthcare provider ever tell you they love free food and food with lots of carbs and sugar. So thanks for me. Thanks from uh, all the staff here at Riverside. God bless and you guys take care. Thank you. Hey Adventure Church, I just wanted to say thank you for your generosity for bringing Panera Breakfast to my teachers and myself. It was such an uplifting surprise. Um, we felt so blessed that people were thinking of us while we're working during this pandemic and um, it just really, really brightened our day. Thank you so much for being the hands and feet of Jesus in such a special way to me and my coworkers in maternal fetal medicine by sending us breakfast from Panera. We got a call that there was a special delivery for us at the front desk and everyone was excited when I brought back coffee and pastries. The breakfast fueled us throughout the day and was such a special encouragement to everyone in our department. It was special for me to get to share the love and generosity of Adventure Church with my coworkers. We got to have really neat conversations throughout the day about our church and what goes on there. Thank you for thinking of us, for brightening our days, there were smiles through all of our face masks. We truly appreciated the time it took and the encouragement that you sent through something as simple as breakfast. Hey, Adventure Church. I just wanted to say a quick thank you to everyone um, there for the wonderful surprise of Panera the other day. Um, you should have seen everyone's faces light up uh, when they saw that we had free uh, coffee and bagels and muffins. It was greatly appreciated. Isn't it awesome to see your generosity at work? We're in a season we're calling 19 Days of Kindness, where we're trying to just spread hope, spread kindness and the love of Jesus during this season. And because of your generosity, we're able to continue to support our first responders. We're able to, to support our essential workers, all of those who are making a huge difference right now in serving and loving people in our community. And so thank you for your support and your generosity. You know, right now as a church, we aren't pulling back at all. We're not slowing down at all. In fact, we're hitting the accelerator. We're moving this mission forward. And that is not possible without your faithfulness and your giving to what God is doing here. So I just wanna tell you, I'm proud of you. I wanna say thank you for stepping up. Thank you for trusting God. Thank you for investing in his mission and his kingdom and furthering what he's doing all around the world, our global partners. I just got a text today from a global partner saying, thank you for supporting us during this season. God is moving and I believe that. God is on the move. God is using uh, this virus and these stay at home seasons that we're in to spread his love and hope and it's all because of you and your faithfulness that we're able to do that at Adventure Church. Next week I'm going to come to you with an update on where we're at with, with our building, with land, all of those things but I just want to tell you and I want to encourage you we are moving the mission forward and as long as God keeps providing the resources we're going to keep doing what God has called us to do. Amen. So I just want to say thank you for all that you're doing. You can give online all the time but the easiest way right now to give is by texting any amount to 84321. You can set up text to give that way. It'll shoot you a link back and you can continue to, to set up recurring donations, whatever that is. I just want to say thank you for giving. Thank you for supporting the mission here. Before we give today, I want to let you know of one announcement, a special thing we're doing this week in our COVID-19 Days of Kindness on Tuesday, April 21st, starting at 6.30 a.m. and going to 10.30 a.m. We are doing something called the Breakfast Blessing. And so anyone can come by. We're especially encouraging those who are essential workers and on the front lines during the season to swing by Panera on 23 in Lewis Center Road, right here close to our church. And we're gonna give you a free bagel or pastry and coffee on us, all right? So share that with some of your friends. Let people know that we just wanna be a blessing to our community during this time. So swing by on Tuesday morning, 6.30 a.m. to 10.30, and we'll see you there. Again, thank you for your giving. Let me pray for us today, and we'll give. Father, we thank you for all that you're doing, that you choose to use us and our generosity to spread your love and hope. And God, we pray today as we give and as we in faith trust you and invest into your kingdom that you would use these resources to reach more people with the amazing message of your son, Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. If you believe that, would you say amen? Amen.
Well, welcome again to Adventure Church Online. Today, we're kicking off a brand new series called I Got Issues. And don't look at me like that because you got issues too. You see, we all got issues. It's really not a matter of having them. It's what you're going to do about them. And I'm confident that throughout this series, God is going to help you and me overcome our issues through the truth of his word. Amen. Well, again, we're glad that you're here today. Again, the issues that we have, man, really can impact our life in a big way. And today I want to talk to you about control. In fact, I've titled today's talk, Control Freak. And if I'm just being real and being genuine and authentic with you, I am a control freak. And if you don't believe me, just ask my wife. But we're all controlling in one way or another, right? For some of you, it could be at work, right? You want it your way. You want it done on your time. That's the way you want it to be. If you're not the boss, you want to be the boss, right? Work is that way. Maybe it's a home for you and, and everything has a place. Come on, can I get an amen at home? Can you just shout me down for a minute right now? Because that is the truth. That is in God's word somewhere. Everything has a place, right? Everything should be put away. And if you don't believe me on that one, you can ask my wife again, because everything should have its own place. Wherever you get it, put it back. Maybe it sounds a little controlling. I don't know. But maybe it's the dishwasher for you. The dishwasher needs to be loaded a certain way. Certain things go on the top, certain things go on the bottom, and they go in a certain way to get the most in the dishwasher that you can. Come on, that's not a control thing. That's just common sense, right? It's just being smart. Maybe it's just people, right? We, you want to control people and maybe you are a boss. Maybe you are a leader and you micromanage people. And uh, sometimes because of the control, we can manipulate and threaten. There's lots of areas of our life that we want to have control. Everybody's got their thing. My wife is screen time with the kids. I'm telling you, she controls the screen time like a boss. Them kids know when screen time is done at our house. Same with sugar in my house. Listen, dad has to sneak some, some, some sugar every now and then because my wife has the sugar on lockdown for the kids. She's a little controlling with it. Uh, for me, I don't care so much about sugar. Uh, it's just everything else. <laughs> it's just everything else. And I'm an Enneagram 8. If you don't know what that is, look it up. But the idea is, is that, man, I'm naturally a controlling person. It's something that I have to work at. And in this season that we find ourselves in, the COVID-19 season, the stay-at-home order season, the lockdown season that we're in, man, this, this control thing has been a challenge for me, right? This, this whole idea of, of not knowing is hard for me. Like, I feel like I'm a leader. I can lead through things. And as long as I know what's going on and what I need to do, I can lead through it. But I can't lead what I don't know. And it's the uncertainty of this season. It changes day to day. How long are we going to be like this? How long are we going to be in a, a social distancing state? I don't know. And so I can't really make decisions for myself, for my family, and most really for the church. How are we going to navigate social distancing? What is this going to look like in our future? And this uncertainty is difficult for me, and so I've had to put some things in place to help me navigate that, but it's really about control. And this uncertainty is nothing new in our world, it's nothing new in God's church, and it's nothing new for God's people. Most of what we find in scripture was written in environments of extreme uncertainty, with extreme unknowns. The Bible is not filled with feel-good messages for a world that we don't live in. And and here in scripture, in many different places, we find a God who is active and who is speaking directly in to uncertain times. In fact, if we go back in the Old Testament, right, Joseph, a a hero of our faith, he, he listened as his brothers debated whether to sell him or kill him. And, and we discover that even in that time, God was with him. King David was awakened one morning to the rumor that his own son was conspiring against him. And, and he, was, he was called a man after God's own heart, following the will of God, living through a very uncertain time. The frightened mother of Moses wrapped her baby in a blanket and put him in a basket so that the Egyptian soldiers wouldn't kill him. And God ends up using 
this man to deliver his people. And years later, the mother of Jesus flees her own home with a newborn baby to escape the sword of Herod. The Apostle Paul thought that God had called him, but he found himself writing many of the letters he wrote in the New Testament from prison, explaining to us, even in those times, the promises that God has for us. You see, Scripture is the perfect place to come in times of uncertainty. The Bible is filled with stories of people facing uncertainty and discovering that not only God is not absent, but he is present and diligently working to accomplish his will in this world and in the lives of those who love him. You see, in scripture we're challenged and and in this time of uncertainty, in our world that we're facing, it challenges us to trust God even when it's hard to find him and even when it's difficult to understand him. We're we're challenged in these uncertain times. I'm challenged right now in this season leading the church, leading my family, leading myself to trust God when I can't find him and when I really don't understand him. One of the most quoted, probably most popular and I would say most challenging passages in all of scripture is found in Proverbs 3, chapters five through six. It says this, to trust in the Lord with all of your heart, with everything you got. The heart represents our mind. It represents our soul. It says to trust in God, trust in the Lord with everything that you are. Lean on him. Don't lean on yourself. It says not to lean on your own understanding, Verse six, in all of your ways, submit. This word submit in Hebrew meant to acknowledge. It meant to to know God intimately, to connect with him, to, to really lean into that relationship. It says, submit yourself to God. And it says, and he will make your path straight. He will direct your path. When when you do this, when you, when you lean not to your own understanding, when you, when you don't try to figure out the future, but instead trust the one who has the future figured out, when you lean on him, when you acknowledge him, when you, when you rest in him, it says that he will be the one to direct your steps. You see, this thing of control is it, really, I call it kind of the crazy cycle of control. Because the more we try to control, the more we're afraid of losing control. And the more we're afraid of losing control, the more we try to hold on and control. And we get in this cyclical cycle of fear where we begin to get trapped in anxiety and worry because we're trying to figure out what's happening and we can't and our minds can't fathom, our minds can't understand. We just can't get our heads around it. And and Proverbs says when you have a situation like that, don't try to figure it out. Trust the one who has it figured out. Out. It's a crazy cycle of control and we got to break the cycle and we got to get out of it. So how do we do that? The first thing is we really need to just name what we're trying to control in this season that we're in and then outside of this season when life gets back to some kind of rhythm of normal and, and maybe even if you go back to before the craziness of watching your kids and homeschooling your kids and being stuck in the house and not being able to go anywhere and working from home and Zoom calls. Come on, somebody, are you sick of Zoom calls yet? I mean, I'm thankful for them, but I'm getting sick of them. And, and before all this happened, there was control issues in your life, things you tried to control. And, and you need to name what that is in this season. Maybe it's something you've always struggled with. Maybe it's something new in this season, but you need to name what you're trying to control. Maybe even right now, if you're watching with someone, just tell them. If you're with your spouse, they probably could tell you what it is, but just nudge them. Oh, is this for you? It's what it is. It's the kids. It's your job. It's money. It's this situation. It's your parents, whatever it may be. But there's things we try to control. You need to name what that is. It's schedules. It's, it's our coworkers. It's our image. It's the future, right? And whatever that is, what you need to do is you need to choose to surrender. And, and Proverbs says to choose to give it to God and to trust God. And it's up to you what you do. 
I'm gonna say that again because it rhymes and it sounded good. It's up to you what you do. Are you gonna choose to try to control or are you gonna choose to trust and surrender? There's two questions we need to ask when we're struggling with control, when we find ourselves in this cycle, the crazy cycle of control. Two questions we need to ask. The first one is this, is is you just really need to pull back, zoom out, get a perspective and say, is this really worth my concern? Is this worth what I'm giving it to? Is this worth the energy? Is this worth the thought? Is this worth the time that I'm putting into this? Is it really worth my concern? You know, as the leader of, of Adventure Church, it's really one of the great, greatest honors and privileges of my life to get to lead this movement. It's a God thing. I'm humbled that he's put me at the helm here. But as the church has grown, there's been things that I've had to let go of. The church has grown because of that. Our team has had to grow. And so there's things that I used to do at the beginning that I don't do anymore. And some of those things I was more than willing to let go of, but some of them were hard to let go of. But as I've had to put people in place in order to keep scaling and and growing to the capacity and to accomplish the mission and the vision that God has given us, I've had to learn to let go. I've had to learn to trust. In fact, Great leader Craig Groeschel says this, as a leader, you can have control or growth, but you can't have both. And in order for us to grow, in order for us to keep accomplishing the mission that God has given us, I've had to let others lead in order to fulfill our mission. I've had to let go and give them control. But there's times where I get back involved and I can get worried. I go, I wouldn't do it like that. I would have done it like this. And I have to ask myself, is this really worth my control? Is this really worth my concern in what I'm trying to do? You see, there's other things that that we all wanna control and, and we have to just choose to let go of it because in the big picture of life, it's not worth it. And some of this, we can even get down to the small things uh, in our life, right? Like, you know, you you come home from work and and the kids didn't put their stuff away and there's there's toys everywhere and and you like things, you're like me, you like them tidy and neat and clean and and that's the way they should be. And and, and instead of jumping on the kids and, and getting on them and spending your evening upset because it's not the way you thought it should be and the way it should look, you just go, you know what, I'm thankful that, that my kids are still here because someday they're gonna grow up and be out of the house and I'm gonna wish I could come home to a messy house. You get big picture, is this really worth my concern? Is this worth the investment of energy and time I'm putting into that, the house clean, the kids, right? Here's the thing for me, my lawn is very important to me. It's like my hobby, it's my thing. I want my lawn to look right. I get the lines perfect on my mower. The lines are right. And you know what happens as soon as I mow the grass and I get it looking good? My kids ride their bike through the grass, messing up my lines. Can you believe that a kid would do that? (laughs) And I can get all bent out of shape and my wife goes, Kyle, it's grass. It's a yard. It's for them to play in. I go, no, it's not. It's to look good. It's what it's for. It's for me to be able to look at, and now it doesn't look good. Control, control. Is it really worth my concern in the big picture? It's not. Some of the things that you're trying to control, some of the things that you get upset about that that get you all bent out of shape, is it really worth your concern? You gotta choose to let go of it. You gotta choose to let go. So you gotta ask yourself, first of all, is it really worth my concern? And the second thing you have to ask when when you're struggling with control, when you find yourself in the crazy cycle of control, you have to ask, is this mine or is it God's to handle? Is it mine or is it God's to handle? If it's for you, if there's something you can do about it, then you need to do it. Listen, I wanna make this clear. I wanna say this. Surrendering control is not the same, is, it's not relinquishing responsibility. Surrendering control is not the same as relinquishing responsibility. Listen, there's some things that God won't do for you. I've heard it said like this, God won't do for you what you're not willing to do for yourself. God has given you free will and choice. And so some things, things that are within your control, you want to be healthy, you got to do things that are going to get you healthy. You want to you be 
in a better situation financially, you got to make better decisions financially. In fact, this week, many people are getting their stimulus checks, and I've already seen that people are blowing the stimulus money. That money was given to help you out, and, and people are buying things they don't need to impress people they don't like. Dave Ramsey 101, right? And, and, and so there's things that are yours to handle. God isn't gonna do it for you if you're not willing to do it yourself. So if you want God's blessing on your finances, you need to put him first. You need to be generous. You need to have a budget. You need to save first, give first, save second, live on the rest. You gotta get sound principles financially in your life, with with your health, with your marriage. God isn't gonna magically fix your marriage, you got to be willing to do the work. You got to be willing to put the other person first. You got to be willing to serve. It's not about control. It's about doing what God has called you to do. God's word is full of instruction on how we to live our lives so that we can live life to the full. And some of the things you're trying to control are within your control to do. But if it's not yours to handle and there's nothing you can do about it, Proverbs says you gotta surrender it. You gotta give it to God. And next week, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into this passage, and and you've probably heard this before, and I think, in fact, I've even shared it uh, in these, the weeks coming into this because it's just so relevant to the situation that we're in. But in Philippians 4, 6, the Apostle Paul is writing from prison. He's in jail. He's been, you know, sentenced for fulfilling the will of God on his life. He's been condemned, put in prison, and he writes this, from prison, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and then the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. You see, when you try to control what you can't control, it will always lead to worry and anxiety. If God hasn't told you it's yours to handle, then you gotta hand it to him. If God has told you this is not yours to handle, well, how do you know? If there's something you can do about it, do it. But if you can't, if it's not yours to handle, hand it over to him. You surrender, you choose to let go. And when you surrender and when you give it to God, Paul says, that will always lead to peace. When you try to control what you can't, it's the perfect recipe for worry and anxiety. None of us want that. But when you surrender and give to God, you will always have peace. Can you change your spouse? You cannot. Can you make them be who you want them to be? Can you get them to do what you want them to do? No, you cannot. Can God change your spouse? I believe he can. Can you heal your loved one? You can't. Can God heal your loved one? If it's according to his will and purpose, he absolutely can. Can you control your kid's future? Can you control your future? No. But you know what? God can. So here's the question we must each answer for ourselves as we we face our own personal and really national uncertainty is this. Is it possible that God is still active, still accomplishing his purposes when there is no indication of his activity? Is God active in your world and in the world? when everything seems to be going backwards, when everything seems to be spiraling out of control, is God still in control? And your answer to that question will determine the response, your response and our response to this uncertainty we're in. You see, with the clarity of hindsight, if we were to ask, when did God accomplish the greatest work, in his greatest work in scripture and in our life, I know for me, I can say that God has accomplished the most in me in the times of greatest uncertainty in my life. I've shared my story about my daughter and open heart surgery and these things. God has done more in and through me in uncertain times than any other time in my life. You see, and we have to remind ourselves, 
When life is uncertain, listen to me, God is not. Good things come from broken things. When we can see that God is behind or or working in and through these undesirable circumstances we're in right now, even the ones we bring upon ourselves or the ones that we just find ourselves in, there is this sense of purpose and peace that emerges, that God is in control. You are not in control, but God is. When you face times of uncertainty when life is uncertain listen to me God is not he is moving he is working and you go well that's really great Kyle and that preaches really well but that won't get me a job it won't pay my bills it won't take care of my kids it won't restore my 401k and you're right it won't but it will allow you to maintain hope and faith and peace in the meantime It will allow you to go to bed at night with confidence that God is with you and he hasn't abandoned you. It will motivate you to be on the lookout for God's grace and his intervention in this difficult season. It'll keep you from leaning in directions that will only make things worse and it will protect you from the pit of despair to know and to trust. Lean not on your own understanding in this season. Don't try to control it. Surrender it. Give it to God. Trust and know that your heavenly Father sees you. He knows you. He loves you. He is working. He is moving. And he will accomplish his purpose in and through you. I believe that. I believe we're gonna come out of this season Bigger, better, stronger than ever. Because if God is for us, who could be against us? And God works all things together for his good, for your good and his glory, for all who are called according to his purpose. Lean not on your own understanding in all of your ways. Acknowledge him, trust him, surrender it to him, give it to him. When life is uncertain, God is not. Today, listen to me, let it go. Give it to God. You can't handle it, but he can. When you can't handle it, hand it over. Give it to God. He sees you. He knows you. He's got you. In Isaiah 41.10, the prophet gave us this promise. He says, so do not fear. God says, I am with you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Listen, today if you're watching and you haven't given control of your life to God, what are you waiting for, friend? He loves you, he's for you. All of us separated from God, sin did that. We're born into it, we couldn't avoid it, we couldn't get out of it. You can't earn his grace, you can't earn his love. God gave it to you through his son. And Easter that we celebrated last week was God's proof of his love that he allowed his son to be crucified for my sins and for your sins. It was a debt you couldn't pay, but a debt that you owed. And God took it for you, debt paid in full. You can be forgiven and free to be who God's called you to be if you would just be willing to surrender. That's what salvation is. It's a surrender of control of your life, saying, I'm not gonna try to dictate my life. I'm not gonna live by my rules and what I think. I'm gonna trust God. I'm gonna follow God. And the Bible says, if you will do that, God will lead you to life and life to the fullest and give you the promise of eternity forever. So even our greatest fear of death is eradicated because we know when we exit this world, when this world ends, it just marks a new beginning. In heaven with God forever. So today, if you're watching and you don't know Jesus, it's very simple. The Bible says you need to submit, you need to bow your knee and surrender and to acknowledge God as your king and in your Lord. So today, if that's you, I wanna lead you in a simple prayer. Listen, I don't need to even go any further than this. You know right now, you can sense the Holy Spirit just telling you, it's time. What are you waiting for? God is for you, he loves you. You are his son, you are his daughter, and he is saying, come home to him. Allow him to come into your life. So if that's you right now, I want you to just bow your head. If, it, if it's not you and you're saved and you know Jesus, why don't you pray for everyone who's watching right now that God would give them the courage to surrender in this moment, that he'd give you the faith to, cur- the, and to just bow your knee and to, and to acknowledge him as the savior of your life. If that's who you are right now, just pray this with me. Say, dear Jesus, today I surrender all that I am to you. 
I confess and believe that you're the son of God and that you died for me so that I can live for you. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. Teach me what it means to acknowledge you and to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you said that prayer today, I want to encourage you to go to the next steps portion of our website there. Click on that button that's on the link. And we just want to get some information into your hands today uh, to help you understand what comes next. If you're new today, uh, we want to encourage you uh, to, to text the number on the screen there with the word connect. If you text connect to that number, uh, we want to just connect with you, get you a free gift uh, for tuning in and being a part of our experience today online. But for the rest of you, the band's going to come back up and, and we're just going to uh, sing a song today and where we're really going to to give things over to God. As we just read in Isaiah, it says that God will uphold you with his right hand, that God will hold you with his hands. And so if you're holding on to something that needs to be put into his hands, let him hold it. Let him hold you today. And the team is gonna lead us in this song, and I just want the Holy Spirit to enter into the room that you're watching in today, to enter into your heart, enter into your life, and to give you the peace that Paul says will guard your heart and your mind. That's what we need in this season, to be guarded with the peace of God, to trust that he's in control, that we can trust him, that we can put everything in his hands. My life is in your hands, Lord. Father, we worship you. We pause and we allow the Holy Spirit to do its, his work in our hearts today. In Jesus' name, with amen. Every breath, with every word I speak. Every step.
want to thank you guys for joining us here at Adventure Church Online. We look forward to seeing you next week as we continue on in our series, I've Got Issues.